Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a Chinese lantern physalis in a lovely ceramic vase. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we're going to begin our um, illustration with a little bit of a pencil drawing. So I'm going to draw in a vase shape to begin with and um, I might maybe I might be making this look quite simple. All I've done to begin this is just mark out some little um, measurements of what height I want it and at what point I want there to be sort of um, variations in the shape and a little line at the bottom to do a little curve and then slightly flatter there and then this will be almost completely flat and that's just it's a little wobbly but it'll do absolutely fine for what we need it to and then I'm going to draw in my rather sort of angular stems of the Phasalis because it is a, a wonderfully kind of sculptural piece of foliage or foliage well they're fruit really aren't they um, so I just want to get a nice sort of sense of asymmetry so we'll have that one coming up a bit higher and that is all we need to begin with so we can say goodbye to our pencil and as with our geraniums we're going to begin by painting in our um, physalis lanterns so I'm going to mix up a bit of cadmium orange and cadmium red and we're going to sort of play around with the sort of percentage of like how much orange to red to create a number of different tones and shades on our lanterns because they are sort of multifaceted little shapes and even when we're painting on a really miniature scale as we are here we want to go in for some variation so let's begin I've got a three tenths brush um, sort of fairly small but with the pointed round style of brush it means a little crumble hair on there so it means that you can um, really sort of squash the brush down and come up with some lovely shapes so I'm going to start with quite a dilute um, orangey red colour and I'm just going to start by squishing the brush down and then coming down into a point a few times and you'll see that I'm just allowing for a tiny bit of unpainted space there and then whilst it's still wet I'm just going to drop in a little bit more of that concentrated colour just dabbing it at the bottom you can also use it to just slightly adjust the shape if you need and just letting that flow up so I'll do it once or twice more and we're just going to fill in the lantern shapes along these branches they do tend to get a little bit smaller towards the end but not a huge amount of shrinkage and they sort of jangle about on the branch at different angles so make sure that you really play around with how they're positioned. I'm going to now start to fill up the branches with plenty of Chinese lanterns. I'm going to keep them all fairly spaced out for the moment and then we can look at adding in a few sort of overlaps and underlaps. So just keep painting your little um, lantern shapes, a little like hot air balloons. So I'm just finishing off the first layer of these more sort of spaced out lanterns and I can show you um, a few little different techniques I've sort of come across as I've gone along. So this one here, I've done one that's almost that we can sort of see the base of it. Um, and so 
what we can do is it would do more of a rounded shape and then with a bit of red or the more concentrated mix you can just put in a little point sort of at the base there and we see more of a more of a base shape so still making sure we've got that unpainted space creating some lovely definition in these lanterns and then adding in a little bit more concentrated colour. We need these to dry fully to be able to um, begin the next stage so we'll let these dry and start to add in a few more. Now we've let these dry we can do a few more things so first off as I was talking about possibly overlapping one or two so it's particularly sort of when the branch is hanging down you can find little gaps to just place in one behind the other. It's important to have let these dry uh, the, the previous layer so that these little delicate shapes can just sit in behind and not bleed into each other. Um, I think I'll pop one in here. And these all hang from the branches by little stems. So that's why they're all just a little bit sort of hung off from the branch. But yeah, it's fun to just find little places where, let's have one just hanging off the bottom here. Yes, yeah, so the golden rule is make sure your previous layer has dried fully so you get the full benefit of the blend. Now the other thing we can do is to add the tiniest bit of detail to the already dry lanterns by just adding maybe the tiniest bit of a brush stroke to reinforce some of those sort of uh, facets, I suppose, on the lanterns. You're not doing, you're not sort of doing lines, you're just doing almost the colour, the shady colour in each concave panel. And you don't need to do it to every single one, but it's kind of nice. Just gives it a little bit more character. And that's what we really like to go for with these kinds of illustrations. I'm finally happy with my composition, so now we can move on to the branches. Now, um, my Phasalis are sort of, I'd say they're pretty dried, um, these ones, so we're not going to add in lots of leaves and our branch isn't going to be the fresh green it is when this is a, a, a living plant. Um, so what I've got here is I've got a mix of green gold, yellow ochre, and then I've also got just to one side burnt sienna and a bit of French ultra marine, marine blue. And what I'm going to do is I am going to sort of paint along my pencil lines and just like this and sort of start the branches but we're also going to have the little stems going off towards the Phasalis lanterns. Now the branch is a real sort of zigzag kind of branch so I'm going to exaggerate it even further than my pencil lines and I've still got my nice uh, three tenths brush again I think it's just about okay so I'm just going to add in a fraction of this shadowy colour just to get a bit more shade on that and then for the little branches leading to the lanterns I'm actually going to use the orange red colour I've been using and they're just gonna very delicately hang off
like that. So I'm now going to progress across, filling in my branches and also popping in just a little bit of the shadowy colour as we go. You can decide when you're painting whether your um, little lanterns are in front of or behind the branches because we can paint in a fairly easily fairly concentrated way because the lanterns have been done in a fairly dilute style. So I'm just keeping painting in sections to keep this sort of jagged branch going. And that little bit of shadow just really helps strengthen the colour. And then still all with this three tenths brush, wonderfully, wonderfully versatile. We can pop in the branches and sometimes it's not going to be massively obvious and sometimes they're going to be really clear but those little threads of orange branch just are a lovely way of tying it all together so we've got one more branch and then we're going to look at the vase and I'm going to do um, a sort of homage to a porcelain willow pattern style vase because I just think that blue and orange looks so good together. I mean, they are complementary colours on opposite ends of the scale on the colour wheel. If you're interested in colour theory or if you ever wonder why certain colours just look good together. In watercolour, the joy is, is you can really play around with the sort of consistency and concentration of two colours that should really be at odds with each other. So we can do really nice delicate orange lanterns as we've done here and then a really vibrant strong blue pattern on the vase and it'll just look fantastic. Now there may come a time when you're like, oh, I think I could just pop another little lantern on there. And that is totally cool. You go for it. There we go. Right, next stage is the vase. I've mixed up some uh, cobalt blue deep and some French ultramarine blue, just got a nice sort of dilute bit in my palette here and I am going to paint some patterns on my vase and we're going to begin with a nice dilute way because I'm going to show you a really nice effective way of how to get a nice sort of shine, a gloss on this vase. Now the patterns themselves, it's very much down to you to sort of maybe have a little look at some references to get some inspiration for patterns. What I like to do is to work in sections so I don't get overwhelmed, I think. And I like to keep it fairly simple when I am painting something on a sort of miniature scale. So I like to do lots of different little bits of mark making. So you can see here, I just painted off the top section, as I created a little sort of section for myself, and then just did some diagonal sweeping lines with my dilute cobalt blue deep and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to sort of work my way down to this section and this time I'm going to paint in some little panels and 
and I think there's no problem if they're you know a little bit wobbly a little bit wonky I think that really adds to the charm of painting this kind of little illustration and then just mixing up a bit of sort of angular shapes with something more lyrical but I've had a little look at some vase designs that I thought were absolutely lovely and I'm just doing very simplified rudimentary versions and I'm just sort of filling in the gaps really So then I'm going to attempt to put that in on the side. So just remember your design will be a little bit sort of squashed. And you can just keep filling in the gaps. So we'll just fill up this top panel and then move our way down. Now moving down into the body of the vase, I can give myself a few rings around and maybe another little series of a repeated little mark. And just don't forget that the roundness of your shape is achieved by keeping things on curved lines. So just keep painting in a dilute color because that is going to be the key to getting a nice bit of shine on this vase by starting nice and light. So I'm now going to move down and create a new section. And this time I'm going to paint a bit more of a scene. So I'm going to just sort of do a very sort of crude bird shape with some wings. And a tail. And then sort of in between that, I can do some nice little swirly shapes. And another bird maybe over there, but not sort of not worrying about being symmetrical. Because this section is more about a, a sort of story. These lovely sort of lyrical swirls are very good for filling up space. Maybe adding in some little extra marks. So you really want to get some nice small detailed brushes for doing work like this but saying that the three tenths is by no means the smallest brush and it's still doing an absolutely lovely job. So resist the temptation to be adding stronger colour to your vase paintings and we'll move on down to the next section. This time I'm going to paint a little sort of stylized rose. So I'm doing little sort of C curve shapes around a central point. Trying to come up with a sort of evenish shape. 
that is not too bad. And then I'll pop another one there. And then we can fill up the space here with some lovely leaves and vines. And again, you're just trying to fill up the space in a nice even manner. So I'm just going to work my way through this and then we'll finish it off. One last little repetitive pattern. Just using little V's and X's to create a little last motif. So this has all been done in the sort of nice, fairly dilute cobalt blue deep. And we've got some swells. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my slightly larger brush and I am going to get that brush wet so it's a size four and just get it nice and wet and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub over some of this and just in a certain section just sort of soften it a little bit I just want to sort of faint it a little bit fade it out And what's brilliant is because it's dried, it's holding its shape, but it's allowing me to just sort of fade it a little bit. You can see it's just a bit crisper here, and here the colour has just softly bled into each other. And we're going to let that dry 100%, and then we're going to go back over around the edges with some more crisp concentrated detail. So we've just letting that seep in. And what I'm going to do is I've rolled up a little bit of kitchen roll, and I'm just gonna blot just one little bit. I just want to get a slightly sort of, a bit of a highlight that's just going to knock back that color even further so we get a little bit of shine. So now I'm going to get my Cobalt Blue Deep, which I've been using, but I'm also gonna get in a bit of French Ultramarine and I'm going to mix a more concentrate and because of the addition of the French Ultramarine, a stronger blue. And now I'm going to go in at the edges. Where it is dry. And I'm going to start to add just a little bit of a stronger accent. So in some places it'll just be going over the line and in other places, like this bird, it'll be about just adding in a nice little bit of detail. So this is quite fun because this is the bit where you can really start to add lovely detail and make this just really a really impressive little piece of illustration. So I'm just sort of edging the rose petals that I've done. And I'm not gonna sort of go in in too much detail sort of in this area here, but I will just have those bits on the edge can have some detail. I'm 
So I'm just going to work my way down and let it dry and then the last thing we can do is a little bit of shadow. The last thing to do is add some shadow. And all we need to do is add in a little bit of burnt sienna into the, the blues that we've already been using, so we've got a nice cohesion there. And then also we're going to add a tiny bit of shadow to the um, Phasalis lanterns. So I'm adding a bit of brown into there and a little bit of French ultramarine. So the colour again just has a tiny connection to what it was beforehand. Okay. So I'm going to take my size two brush and take a sort of fairly gentle amount of color. I don't want to go in too hard with this. And first off, I'm gonna paint in just a little bit of shadow in this sort of obvious spot where that lantern has just come down in front of it. We know the light is shining there. So I'm gonna pop in tiny bit of shadow down the side here and you want to try and do it in as few brush strokes as possible so that you don't disturb the lovely designs you've been doing. Now the other thing is we can probably see just a little bit of the sort of other side of the rim. So I'm just going to turn the page a little so I can get a good angle. using the shadow just in the gaps and then softening it with a little bit of water. And then a little bit of shadow along the ground, not too much. And we don't need to worry about sort of how that shadow on the ground takes into account the lanterns. That's just a little bit too involved. But what we can do is we can add a little bit of shadow to some of those lanterns. It's maybe especially the ones that are just behind. So yes, I've got my, got my nice color here mixed in. So I'm looking for the ones that might be just a little bit in shade, so it's the ones that probably were painted in the background. You really don't want to go too overboard with this because you've done a beautiful, vibrant painting, but just a little bit of shadow really makes so much difference. and can really make something pop off the page. Once you've left this to dry, then you can rub out any pencil that you can still see. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So that is now all rubbed out. I can't rub out on camera because the whole table will wobble so much, but I use this kneadable eraser, or otherwise known as a putty rubber, and the link below in the episode notes. If you want to know any of the materials I've been using today, they're all in the episode notes below. But what I really love, once you've rubbed out the pencil, is something like this vase, you really see the negative unpainted space come into its own, and it just looks beautiful and ethereal sitting there. So I really hope that you've enjoyed painting these lanterns with me and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. So um, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!